everybody. Welcome back. We're in part two talking to Greg Bogart about his book, Astrology's Higher Octaves. Greg is an astrologer and psychotherapist in Berkeley, as well as a teacher at Sonoma State University. So welcome back. Thank you, CJ. So at the close of the first segment, um, you were telling us about that um, between now, um, on December, probably, I'm definitely feeling something, but on December 21st, um, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be conjunct. And during that time, um, up until um, sometime in February, you said, it's time for making social changes and changing orientations to kind of that, that frame. And you were saying yourself, like one of the things that you're interested in personally in terms of societal change is to get people not using, you know, basically finding alternative ways to taking drugs to, for, to deal with depression. And so your next couple of months, what is it like, what does that mean for you personally as you are thinking about this time period coming up? Well, I, I was um, going to say that the other area for me is uh, of, of evolving group consciousness is through music. Mm. So I'm involved with a lot of projects uh, involving music. Now, it's hard. We're, we're under shelter in place for uh, the next month. Uh, but uh, for months, we've been playing in somebody's backyard 10 feet apart and having mm. a great time. Uh, so when we're allowed to uh, congregate again, I'll be continuing that. What I wanted to clarify was about the Jupiter-Saturn transit. So they are close together through January and February, Jupiter starts to move away from Saturn a bit, but basically the whole year, they're resonating together in wow. areas. And Saturn will be there for two years. Oh, wow. So, okay. so it's a long stretch in Aquarius. It's just that this phase in December, January, February, when they're really close together, people may want to notice what decisions they are forming at this time and to realize the importance of them. And you know, at the last conjunction, it was in my eighth house, the house of getting uh, loans, credit, and mortgages. So I, my wife and I bought a house under that. That was a major formative decision that shaped the 20 year cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous time it was in my 12th house in 1981. And that's the house of metaphysics and mysteries and I was immersed in the study of astrology and became the apprentice to an astrologer right at the time of the Jupiter-Saturn mm. conjunction. So it was a mm. major commitment to the interior life, mm. and esoteric knowledge and mm. metaphysical practices. So uh, we can talk, uh, I, if, if you would like, I can take a brief tour through the houses of the chart or I can yeah, I want to ask, I just want to go overall, ask a couple questions. You said that, you know, your birth chart is not a finished product. It's a map of what could happen. Yeah. And so part of um, what you said is that charts need conscious involvement to unfold. So, um, and for us to be during December through February, being kind of more aware of what kind of decisions are arising. But what else can we do in terms of, what, what, what is it that we should do, quote unquote, do or be during this time period to make the most out of the potentiality of this period? Form your plans and make commitments to it and strategize okay. to make it actually manifest. That's what right. Jupiter Saturn as a pair is about. Jupiter okay. is about planning and setting goals. Saturn is about steering our actions and attention in a focused way in a sustained way that builds structures so we realize our aspirations. Mm. And knowing your birth chart, you can plot where this is most likely to be focused, where mm. you're likely to feel an intensification of interest. This is about following our interests, astrology, how astrology can help guide our career choices deal with career crisis, unemployment, burnout, workplace stress, and how to understand phases of the vocational cycle. 
But what are some specific questions we, we could be asking ourselves during this time period? Well, if you're asking how I would approach it to make astrology helpful, yes, I would get a accurately calculated birth chart done. You can do that at astrodeanst or astro.com or mm -hmm. probably many other places. Uh, and also you can hire a professional and there are hundreds of us practicing all over the country and all over the world who will interpret it for you. Mm -hmm. But basically find where the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is happening. If it is in your first house near the ascending point, and it may have to do with creating a more successful professional persona, mm. how you present yourself and behave, the whole way you present your goals and your objectives, and just having the right demeanor, the right presentation. In the second house, there's a big emphasis on fortifying your financial base to figure out how to earn more money. That's the goal, just to have more substantial resources. And I just talked to someone who is um, a mom, and she's been a stay-at-home mom for a number of years, but she has the second house conjunction happening, and suddenly, yeah, we've got to, i got to go back to work. We've got to save money for these kids to go to college. You know, it's only 10 or 11 years away. So she's motivated in the second house. In the third house, in enhancing one's knowledge through learning to read and pay attention better, to acquire information more effectively, to have um, to be better informed. The third house is the house of learning and skills of communication. So learning to write better, learning basic knowledge, uh, learning how to process information, to access knowledge. So more time reading, doing being a student, and also issues of transportation, driving. You know, uh, of course, that's all changing with um, the shutdown. In the fourth house, commitment to the family, to change, improvement, and enhancement of the home, changing your residence or improving it, developing your personal space, your personal dwelling, and being more involved in the family development. In the so in that, that case, the vocation would be focusing on family, even though it may be like I'm working, but, and is this like the next 20 years would be my focus on this area no, or just this year? Let's just say the next five years. You know, we're, okay. Uh, That's a long time. Okay. Let's, okay. Got it. But it can also mean creating work structures in the home. Mm, so many mm -hmm. of us now are working from home, mm. from working from home. I gave up two offices. Mm. And in the fifth house, to be more committed to one's creativity mm. and to be more uh, focused on the development of children and seeing their aspirations form, their plans, their goals, their education, and, uh, and their intelligence rising. So the fifth house is a tremendous realm to see one's, uh, the results of one's creative efforts, creative uh, progeny. The sixth house emphasizes health and skills. So it, on the one hand, means paying more attention to consistent habits, better nutrition, finding better medical care, finding a better physician, finding the right regimen, the right treatment, the right sadhana, the right, the right consistent practice to do to um, improve one's health and one's efficiency. But it's also the house of training, training employees, apprentices, mentoring, passing on of skills. In the sixth house, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction can mean more responsibility in the workplace being a stronger force of authority in the workplace. If the conjunction moves into the seventh house, a focus on greater commitment to your marriage, your friendship, your relationships, your alliances, to put energy into those, to say, I need you in my life, and learning how to be more effectively in union, in collaboration, in, um, in agreement, 
to have um, the right interchange with others, the right um, the right relatedness. Mm -hmm. In the eighth house, that relatedness wants to make more productive decisions through sharing resources, through navigating, you know, having a shared bank account, dealing with issues of credit, loans, debts, taxes, estate planning, um, relationships to lending institutions, mortgages, investment, all of that complicated world of interpersonal finance and building uh, wealth through investment. In the ninth house, the conjunction will bring greater focus to intellectual pursuits, having a philosophy, finding a higher meaning in life, maybe a guiding social ideal or ideology, and be more committed to a teaching, a doctrine, a religion, a, uh, an established ethical principle. So that's the ninth house. It's our beliefs getting attention. It's the house of higher education, graduate education, conceptual learning. Mm. In the 10th house, the conjunction focuses on opportunities for a rise in rank, in status, and importance in one's occupation, forming professional goals, or constructing the identity of one's uh, highest accomplishments. So uh, that's a powerful place to have the conjunction uh, if you're somebody who's already working in a career, or if, you're, if that's not happening, it can be forming the goals that will become the basis of your pr profession, your, your career. In the 11th house, greater commitment to group activity, meetings, membership, the feeling of belonging, the feeling of community, the focus on building something with others for the future. That is the dominant thing in the 11th house. And if Jupiter and Saturn fall in your 12th house, there may be a draw towards interior life, inwardness, more retreat, less emphasis on external worldly goals and ambitions, letting go, being at one, being in the place of meditation, being mm. in a place of tr uh, trans transparency, letting life come through me in a, in a state of deeper um, union, deeper meditation. Mm. You know, so anyway, it's the, you ask, well, how, what can people ask themselves? Get your chart done, find where this conjunction is, and see how you can develop yourself more within this area of life. Mm. Of course, the conjunction will also connect to planets in your natal chart as it will for you, CJ. Can people contact you to yes. get it? Okay, yeah. so they would contact you and say... Where, where you can contact me. Yeah, so they could contact you and say, okay, this is, you know, Greg, this is happening for me. I really want to be, like, knowing what's going on. So they can find you. Um, they can email you or call you on the phone and set up a, a counseling session so that you could actually give them a sense, like, just like you did with me and, like, what this could mean. How can Absolutely. I unfold to my highest potential? And is that something you could just do on a one-off, or how do you usually work with people? Yeah, I usually do a 60 or 90 minute session. 90 minutes is good for the first time. So, um, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Jay.